This Pitch Breakfast video is brought to you by Spangler and Agins, attorneys for Charlotte's startup community. How you doing? I'm Scott Germine, one of three co-founders of Shomo Live Inc. Shomo Live is a technology company specializing in a core service of booking live music. When I'm talking about live music, we're not talking about the U2s, ACDCs, Coldplay's of this world. I'm talking about the millions of small bands and DJs that play out just a couple times a month, their local bars and restaurants. Our market is gigantic. In the U.S. alone, there's over $11 billion spent annually on the booking and promoting of live music events at small to medium-sized bars and restaurants. The problem is these small bars and restaurants spend way too much time and money booking their own music. It's a huge hassle and they don't have the resources to pay booking agents or promoters, so they're stuck dealing with it on their own. Our solution is showmolive.com. And up until the launch of Showmolive, there has not been one single unified platform that streamlines and automates the booking and promoting of events for this massive untapped market of local level artists and venues. We're essentially, that's why I just said, it's kind of like an Airbnb, but for local live music, <laughs> local live music community. Um, oh, sorry. But what we have done is streamline everything that artists and venues need and brought it to the cloud so they can actually manage all the A to Z's of booking and promoting efficiently and most importantly, economically. One of the owners of Pine Central said essentially what we did is took the booking horse and buggy and turned it into a Tesla Roadster. And one of the booking agents at the Evening Muse, Don Coster, recently said, Shomo Live literally turned hours of work into minutes. And I want to say that again. Shomo Live turns hours of work into minutes. And that was pretty awesome to hear. So since we launched, we've had over 200 paying real customers, over 13,000 users, and, we're gener and we've We've been generating revenue right out of the gates. And although we've been operating an extremely lean budget, we're sub, we're, we've been generating, and although we've been operating an extremely lean budget, we've seen a substantial network effect. And what do I mean by network effect? Well, if you're looking at something like an open table, more restaurants equal more diners, and more diners equal more restaurants, and on and on. And with Shomo Live, more venues equal more job opportunities for artists, gigs, which means more bands. More bands mean more music for live, more live music for fans, which means more fans. And more fans equals more customers for venues, which means more venues. And on and on, and it simply builds upon itself. And this is something we're really excited about, about the design and the actual platform. It gives a great opportunity for a network effect to take hold. Our team has tons of experience in the industry, and we've proven that we can, we can execute, solve problems, pivot as necessary, and we continue to hit milestone after milestone to continue to move forward. And we're lucky because we have a lead investor and advisor who are really knowledgeable and help us tremendously in Sam Rubenstein and Adrian Wilson. So far to date, about 90% of our funding has actually gone to development, technology, and operations. So we've been pretty lean on the sales and marketing budget. But what we've done here in Charlotte is prove out certain models as in regards to the platform, our customers, and the product, and as well as tested different marketing and sales tactics. So we're ready to actually start moving forward with additional round of funding. I'm Scott Mine. I appreciate your time. I read your NCID application like four years ago. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. you guys have stuck with this. Way to go. We yeah. have. Um, yeah, I did too. <laughs> is, is, your, is your customer, the, who's your principal customer? The venue? It's actually the venue. They're the gatekeeper to the whole process. Right. Without the venue at the local level, there's no artists <clears throat> and there's no fans. How are you uniquely advantaged to acquire venues as customers? So what's interesting is right out of the gates, what happened is brought the tool to market, this was about late April. Some of the first venues said, hey, this is great, but can you actually do the, do the handle the booking for us? 
So what we did is, of course, being entrepreneurs, said yes. So we built out all the processes and operations to be able to do so, which means helping bringing the tool to market, getting something like this out there is pretty expensive marketing-wise. But if we're in charge of the venues, that makes us in charge of the artists, which also makes us in charge of the fans, utilizing our own technology, sure. learning lessons quicker. So, and we also can actually generate revenue quicker as it builds out the network effect. So, so, we're yeah, so, so what we're doing is well, actually representing venues, especially as a booking agent. How are you uniquely qualified to acquire venues as customers? What, what's we, special about those humans that lets you all go get venues? We actually have a bigger team than that. We've got right. some professional yeah. bookers that do work for us full time. And what we've done is test some models, uh, what is now Upwork, but we scrub data. And we actually feel we almost be able to keep a booking team here in Charlotte and actually be able to book for, for other cities. Because we can figure out which venues are booking, which artists, how many artists are getting booked. Have enough data to possibly be able to actually streamline and automate this um, in other cities. Or we actually just hire somebody at the local level. Okay, I'm gonna try one more time. So there are, so let's say in the United States of America, there are 25,000 places like the Evening Muse, right? Yep. Ballpark, something like that, right? How, like if you go get 400 of those, your company's not worth very much. And if you go get 5,000 of those, your company's worth a ton, right? Yeah. How, so, are, how are you gonna go get 5,000 of those guys? Well, what we're gonna do with this additional round of funding is go into another two to three, five cities, prove we can get out of Charlotte and actually scale it from there. We've got a lot of lessons to learn. We've gotta get you know, through the next steps, but we really feel we can do that. We just have to prove it. So you gave a good presentation, and I don't feel like you ever answered the question I just asked you. So I just, yeah. I mean, maybe y'all feel different, but like, if you, you, if you have a great answer for how you're gonna go acquire the next thousand evening muses, yeah. it becomes way easier to write you a check. Right. And if you can't answer that question, then it's like, okay, well, that was a good presentation. That's what I think. Yeah. What would you say? <clears throat> yeah, no, I, I agree. I told you guys he was rigorous. Um, He's right, though. Are you, are you calling me an asshole in front of everybody? Like, you know, come on. Maybe you can make that in front. Right. Um, yeah, I, I think what Chris is driving at, it, it's just, uh, you know, what going down, like we were telling Marshall, like going down to an actual example, you know, of just like a, of, a, of a venue that you walked into, and you started to tell that, but you maybe just another couple sentences, you know, put a name on it and just be like, this is what they she said and not just like oh my god you guys are awesome like why 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 because you gave access to bands that they yeah. that they had never heard of I, I, or I, that I, they jacked I, up the average number of people that come to each show or I really wanted to see the product mm -hmm. when you were saying we saved them hours and hours of work yeah I really wanted to see the product like just like like yeah how Right. right. Yeah, demo is actually pretty impressive with the with the product. That's pretty yeah. in, intuitive. Product. I think for something like this, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. I mean, videos, I yeah. pictures. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. it's uh, it, it works. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, um, one thing that I wanted to bring up that you did that I actually, Marshall, you got a free pass. What I'm at, if, if I'm an investor, the first question I'm asking is, who are you? Like, why, why you? And I'm talking to you because you actually put up who you are. You know, like, wh why, why, why you? Why not somebody that uh, I saw on the cover of Men's Journal Magazine? Or in your case, you know, why not somebody who's, you know, who co-founded Live Nation or something? Actually, no, that guy. But uh, you, it, it's, uh, you, you did some of that. And that, I think that's very important when you're pitching. The first question is like, why you? Like, because you woke up in the morning and you were like, hey, this would be really cool. You know, like, no, because I have this experience or I've already convinced people that have experience and have money and have, you know, the wherewithal to kind of help me going forward. I'm just not sort of jettisoning out onto the, you know, onto Mars on my own. Mm -hmm. um, but you, you actually did that and, and that's, that's good in this case. Um, the other point that I want to make is <laughs> you put the thing that, Sorry, I, I probably dislike more than anything. It's like multiple revenue streams. Like, yeah. do yeah. even if you it's think like, you are going to get multiple yeah. revenue streams, nothing yeah. says, I don't know how I'm gonna make money. Like when you say, I'm gonna That's make exactly money right. in various numerous ways. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, it's even if you think that maybe, even if you don't 100% know, you're telling a story here. And the story has to be, 
you know, this is what happened. This is who it was, and this is how it happened. And this is how they made money. And you know, it's like, and and I think it should be to the core of however it makes the most sense. You know, what I mean, like we're going to make money from the bar venues, you know, or we're going to make money from the bands themselves, or however. But right. you know, and then you show the up and to the right, and, and but but don't say multiple revenue streams. And and what else, like if you say we're going to make money doing X. And then the prospective investors say, you could also make money doing Y and Z. That's perfect. Right. But he's dead right. Most of your competition in raising money are going to come in and they're going to say, we work like a Coke machine. You put in three quarters, you push a button, out comes revenue at the bottom. Right? And if you say, you put a quarter in here, and then you put a quarter in there, and then three dimes over here, like investors are just like, yeah, that sounds complicated. Right. right? And they're just like, you know. So, so just concentrate on the revenue streams we're actually today making money on. Dude, if I were pitching your thing, I know nothing about it, but I would say, you know, our customer are the venues. We save them time and money in this manner, and they compensate us in return like so, right? Just, right. Right? just like that, and people will go, all right, how many venues are there, right? How many venues are there? Do you it's know? over, over 60,000 in our market. 60,000, beautiful, right? How many are your customers now? actual customers yeah. that we represent 12 12 okay beautiful yep. so you got a lot of upside show those unit economics and then you have to get i think my opinion you have to get good at answering the question right here's how i'm going to go acquire big chunks of those guys yep. right yep. and going city by city like okay but that sounds like a major grind like how are you going to get like how are you going to get 100 in the first six months of next year you know right like how are you going to do that because like if you can answer that question, all right, well, all right, let's keep talking. Yeah. Cool. What do y'all want to say? Anybody? Anybody new? Yeah. Who else is doing this out there? Who else is? Other cities? Is there another? Not, not necessarily what we're doing. There's a company in Australia that's doing <laughs> slightly of this. I didn't go into really what the platform does. Um, it's a lot more complex than what I'm even presenting. Uh, they actually have a booking tool. There's some companies that are solely a booking tool where a social platform, you can search for events, you can find food and drink specials, comedians, musicians, things of that nature. Nobody is kind of actually doing at least as well-rounded of a product of what we're doing. Not that they can't add. Good opportunity. Yeah. Could be. Yeah. Maybe it's really hard to go acquire all the venues. Yeah. <laughs> that's kind of, you know, like, you know, that's where all small business driven, like business models go to die. That Like it's so expensive and hard yeah. to go acquire them because there's two in Fort Wayne and there's three in Muncie and, you know, five in Indianapolis. And you're like, am I really going to go to Fort Wayne? Like, am I, like, how am I going to do that? Right? Is it that much labor? <laughs> yeah, right? how are you going to do it? Yeah, this, hold on, this guy has a thing. So that's a, In the uh, in this right in this world, it's actually easy. It's a very social network. Um, it's also easy to find and hire the people that do know the bar owners. Um, so that that actually is not tough for us in that regard. Um, and right out of the gates, what we did is is spin the model essentially as we we do it for free for the venues. We charge them 150 200 dollars upfront cost. We take a cut off the artist side. So we average on the venue outside of the the upfront fee. We average about $35 per booking per venue. Um, so we, we get the gigs from the venue and then we actually. This is your pitch, dude. That's, you got it. That's yeah. your pitch. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Something yeah. There. Right. And the artists actually. Generalities there. I didn't know yeah. how much right. it costs. Yeah, yeah. How much, how much does it cost them now to book any of uh, Right. The artists actually buy virtual goods, they pay to submit to these opportunities in the platform. And they pay six to nine dollars per okay. gig. See him after class. Yeah. Work through it again. I've got, I've got <laughs> another pitch that has all that. That was really good, dude. Very good. Very good.